So I'd like to send out a big welcome and thank you to our wonderful presenters today. We have Zizi Bandera from the Immigration Advocates Network, Reese Flexner joining us from the DC Bar, Sander Karsten from Legal Server, Anna Steel from Just Tech, and myself, Jillian Thiel. So I wanted to say welcome. I'm actually going to turn off my webcam at this point to save on bandwidth but I will go ahead now and turn it over to Zizi. And we see that the question box is working. The first question we had is, are these the same tips as from the EJC conference? And these are all new tips from new presenters. Uh, hi, everyone. So I hope you're seeing my screen. Um, thank you for having me, Jillian. My name is Nizi Bandera. I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator here at Immigration Advocates Network based in San Francisco. And I'll be sharing some of the tools that I use on the day-to-day -day and that have increased my efficiency. And I'm also really glad they put me first because I'll start with some of the real basic tools and hopefully my other presenters will go a little more in depth uh, into others. So I'll start with sharing the Planning Week calendar. And this is a Chrome extension. Uh, so if you're like me, you're using Trello and you're also uh, overwhelmed many times with the number of cards and, and labels and the due date features don't quite cut it for me. So one of the reasons why my cards and tasks end up getting backlogged is because I don't always schedule the time that I actually need to complete the task. And that's where I've, I have found this extension anyway calendar uh, handy. So it's basically a calendar that's built into Trello and it's helped me to be able to quickly and easily drive my cards into the time slot when I'm working on them and also adjust them as needed. Uh, and they also just added a Google Calendar integration so you can see what times are blocked out by other events on your Google Calendar. Um, so I'll move on to my next. My next one is Loom. So my second tech tip is also a Chrome extension. A significant part of what I do on the day-to-day -day is providing trainings to our partners uh, for our various online tools and also troubleshooting issues. So Loom is a video and screen recorder tool. Uh, as you can see, it allows me to have my camera on if I'm walking a partner through a training or through the website or tutorial, and it stays within the window I'm sharing. And it's completely free as well. Uh, I've found that having my camera on keeps participants more engaged in the presentation I'm giving versus them just hearing my voice as you're doing now. <laughs> uh, it will also automatically record your uh, presentation, and we'll upload it and give you a link that you can share. And it's also completely free. So the next tip is uh, called IO RAD, and it's also a Chrome extension. Uh, like I mentioned, I do a lot of troubleshooting with users of our tools, uh, some who need a little more guidance with navigating our sites. IO RAD allows me to create tutorials with screenshots for our users. <clears throat> the neat thing about IO RAD is that it will automatically highlight the buttons I clicked on for the tutorial and will write out the steps, as you can see here on the left left hand side. Um, and it'll give me basically package it. Uh, I can just send this a link to this tutorial to the users and have them click through and follow the screens and the instructions. Um, and it's also free. Uh, the next tool, so there's a f quite a few options for something like this. Uh, this one's called Lumio. Um, it's just basically being able to highlight and save content on the web. And this is the one that I use and it helps me keep my number of tabs down and also is easy to organize the content uh, when you save it within your browser. Um, and another one that also helps me keep my computer running is uh, with less tabs open is Tab Snooze, which does just that. Uh, and that's you set timers for when you'd like your tabs to pop back up or to be reminded that, that they're there. You can just archive them for, for later viewing when you have a chance. This other tip is just something that I wish I had known. Um, <laughs> A very long time ago. Uh, so if you want a clear formatting, if you're copying and pasting within Google Chrome, uh, an easy shortcut is to press Control Shift V to paste the text, and it'll clear any formatting that you have. And if you're on a Mac, uh, Command Shift V will do that for you. Uh, so Lucid Chart is my favorite tool for creating diagrams, uh, workflow charts, etc. It's pretty intuitive and easy to use, and they also have a special pricing for nonprofits. If you work at a nonprofit and are interested in having your, 
your team get on uh, Lucid Chart, they also have different options for that. Uh, this next one is kind of a no-brainer, or should have been for me. Um, so if you post around enough on Google Calendar, you've noticed that there's uh, this option that exists within the event details. It's called Find a Time. Uh, so if you click here, um, you can see you know, the people that are invited to this meeting. Um, these are my colleagues, and I can see their Google Calendar will automatically highlight which is the empty time um, that we're all available to meet. And as you can see here, it's 6.30 to the 7.30, so this meeting probably won't be happening. <laughs> but yeah, but it's a, it's a cool feature, and I wish I had known that it existed before. Um, <coughs> um, so this next tip is uh, Google Fonts. So if you're like me and you don't have a design background, but you have somehow ended up having to design graphics and flyers, Google Fonts will come in handy. Uh, you can download fonts for free from this site, and you can also see suggestions of which fonts go nicely with others. And this will help you in creating uh, flyers or different graphics that you might need for your organization. <clears throat> and my last tip is also something around design. So uh, if you're not already familiar with Canva, it's uh, another great tool for the non-designer designing people uh, like myself. And it gives you a ton of different templates you can use for different platforms, uh, whether it's social media. And it even has uh, some templates for resumes and invoices and things like that. Uh, and it's all completely free, which is which is really, really nice. Um, so yeah, so these are some of the tech tips, the tech tools that I use on a daily basis, and I hope that they are helpful for you. Um, but I'm Reese Flexner from the DC Bar Pro Bono Center. Um, I'm their legal tech person. Kind of do um, a lot of their tech. Um, which has required me to learn a lot of skills that I didn't know before. And so these are a lot of the tools that I've used to uh, um, ease that transition um, and help me get comfortable with doing some things that I didn't know how to do before. Um, so one thing that I had to learn a lot about was CSS, which I hadn't worked that much with before, but which anyone who deals with law help a lot um, or does any of their own websites um, knows is really important. Um, and so the program I use is called Brackets, which is an open source markup um, platform for HTML and CSS and JavaScript. Um, and the best part about it is that there are a ton of different plugins for it um, that can make your life a lot easier. Uh, right now I am showing the um, color tags um, plugin. Um, and you can see that it just makes things a lot easier to parse um, when you're looking at something that is very heavily marked up, um, like this little bit of um, markup is. Uh, and they also have things like um, plugins that automatically clean up your code. They have plugins that will um, get rid of white space for you, which is really helpful. You know, there's one that I use that just gets rid of carriage returns, um, which is essential if you're doing things like copying and pasting from PDFs or certain other types of um, Word format. Um, so it's really helpful. And it also has live preview, which means that as you type and as you style it, um, in the text window, it will automatically update on like a Chrome window right next to it. So you can in real time see what you're doing, which is great. Um, another one, um, this may look like my last slide, but another thing that I found useful in training my users to uh, use some of the new tools has been the in um, the in app or the in app screen recording feature of PowerPoint. So NoZZ presented a lot of stuff about um, other ways to make videos. Um, but this is helpful if you are you know, making a slideshow and you just wanna show just a quick little clip of something, um, it's actually really helpful. So here's just an example of it working. Um, you know, all you have to do is um, 
just say record and it automatically min minimizes your um, background and it just helps you um, you know show things off on your screen which is really helpful and the thing that I was showing off there was OneNote which is part of the Microsoft suite of programs that I find very helpful um, it's pretty much just a way to structure lots and lots and lots of data and notes that you may have on things. So you see there's, um, you know, at the top, just high level things. You can group the different tabs into meta tabs. You can have all sorts of hierarchical, um, you know, ways to organize your data. And you can also integrates with Outlook in that you can add a whole tab to your to-do list or you can add whole emails right into your OneNote. Um, so it just it helps me keep track of a lot of different threads of projects I might be working on. Uh, this is something that I have recently found out about because um, my organization places cases um, that um, have lots of sensitive info like social security numbers or um, you know HIPAA medical information um, the new Adobe that um, came out like six months ago maybe they opened up a lot of their features that were previously only available to pro subscribers to just the general user base um, so um, they also so they have this thing called an envelope where you can create one and you can stick files in it and then you can put a password on the whole thing and then send it off to you know an attorney or someone else and there's lots of different you know methods of encryption out there but since we are working specifically with attorneys who are notoriously bad at keeping up with tech, this is a very, very user-friendly way to send documents if you want to passport, password protect them. Um, so next, uh, I'm going to throw Pro Bono Net under the bus a little bit here. Um, although I know these are things that they're fixing in the next um, iteration of Pro Bono Net. Um, this is this Chrome extension called CSS Stylebot. Um, which will help you, or it lets you take a web page um, that is not yours, and it essentially injects CSS into it so you can fiddle around with it and make it more compatible with your needs. Um, so this is the standard um, Pro Bono Net backend. Um, and if you're uploading a lot of resources all at once, um, it can be a pain because you have the um, the sidebar here, the label lengths are really, really long, which pushes everything kind of to the middle of the screen. Um, the most annoying thing for me is the area topics list is like three or four options long. So if you need to scroll down to option number 15, it can be a real pain. Um, as you can see in this next slide with just a few lines of CSS, you can just clean everything up. And so here I got rid of the, um, the sidebar. I made the labels much skinnier and I made it so that the topics list expands all the way down to the end. Um, so this is what I just turn on when I'm uploading, you know, up to 10 documents at once and so need to just get things done quickly. Um, so one thing that we've been doing um, a lot recently is we've been trying to update our translations of our materials because we kind of realized that we had been updating the English versions, um, but that the translations had been lagging behind because of how expensive it can be to translate. And so what we've been doing recently is differential translation because we have some people in house that speak Spanish and because most of the changes are relatively minor we can figure out where the differences are and then only translate the differences and so one way that has helped 
um, my users do this and has helped me keep track of it is something I had never really had the use um, had any use for before. But you can do side by side scrolling of two different documents for Word. And so here's a little just um, example of how it works. You can see there's the Spanish on the right and the English on the left. Um, and so this helps the person who's translating it go through and I don't know why that's in the middle um, and you know mark it up for problems in English, problems in the Spanish, and let me know um, where things need to be changed. Um, so everybody now I think has a lot of password creep. Um, that you have a bajillion different passwords um, for a lot of different sites, and it's really bad to use the same password for lots of different sites because then if one is compromised, then all of your different accounts are compromised. Um, and so password managers are really, really helpful for this. Um, so this is, when I use this last pass, and this is kind of a look at um, how it looks behind the scenes. And essentially what it does is, you know, it installs itself as an extension in your browser. And all you have to do is type your password in once. And that kind of unlocks that session for your browser. And it will auto fill in, you know, all of your information, just like Google does. Um, but in this case, it, it is all behind a single password. So if you by accident left your, um, you know, your computer unlocked or someone got a hold of your computer, they couldn't just open up Chrome and have access to everything you've ever saved a password for. Um, and so having a password manager like this lets you have really secure passwords for a wide variety of sites um, without having to have like a password physical password notebook by your desk to remember them all. Uh, this is another Chrome um, extension it's called HTML5 Outliner. And one of the projects I've been undertaking recently is to um, go through all of our, our old um, resources on law help that are either PDFs or poorly formatted HTML and make it so that they are more accessible to screen readers and things um, by marking them up in uh, like content aware HTML. And one way to make sure that you're doing this well is this Chrome extension called HTML5 Outliner. And all you have to do is you just click a button and it goes through and it tries to find the hierarchy of your page and you can see where you've messed up. Um, so if you had you know, forgotten to close a bracket somewhere, or if you hadn't thought about how one subject is actually kind of a sub section of another subject, you, know, you would see big gaps in here or discontinuities that would be very quickly recognizable so you could fix them. Um, another thing that has been really helpful to me is EDX. Um, there's lots of kind of free learning tools out there like Code Academy, um, and there's a few other ones, but EDX has been my favorite so far. Um, it's how I learned JavaScript and HTML and CSS. Um, they have lots of free courses you can do online, and if you want, you can, you know, you can get one of these certificates to show off the fact that you did in fact learn them for like 50 to $100. Um, but you don't have to, and because pretty much all of their courses, you can audit for free. Um, I think this is my last slide, but this really saved me in a project I had to do, which was the Capital um, Pro Bono Honor Roll, where we recognize everyone who has put in 50 or more pro bono hours in DC. Um, and the last part of the project that I couldn't really figure out how to do is how to display 4,000 plus names easily on a website um, just by my own 
coding. So there's this um, tool called Awesome Table that is essentially a, a data visualization um, platform that you can then export to websites. And in this case, it took maybe 10 minutes to set this up. Um, and it just really quickly and um, aesthetically can show just a giant list of people like this. And it has, you know, search functions and filtering functions and um, sorting functions, all, <clears throat> all just completely on the, the free tier of service, which is great. And there are, if you want to pay for it, lots of other even more complicated things that you can do. Right, so that's it for me. Uh, we did have a question here about whether you can print the tables or add them into a Word doc from your last tip. Um, I have not explored putting them into a, a Word doc um, or printing them because obviously a 4,000 uh, item long list which is wouldn't you wouldn't be able to do that. Um, I would guess not, um, but I would check to find out because it's actually really, really easy to use. Um, and it, it mostly integrates with um, Google Charts. Great. Thanks, Therese. Yeah, thanks a lot. All right. Great. So, hi, everybody. I think most people probably know me. Um, my name is Sandra Carson. I'm with Legal Server. Um, I've worked as an attorney, and I also worked as the Law Help Coordinator at Pro Bono Net for a few years. Um, and currently, I work in a completely remote um, team, which really kind of influenced the, um, the slides and the tech tips that I came up with today. Um, and as many of you know, um, through both, um, if you've ever talked to uh, Jeff Hogue, my supervisor, or me, we're huge, huge Google fans. So, you know, a lot of these are going to be kind of Google related and Google specific, plus let's be serious, I live in my inbox. Um, one of the ways that I, uh, that I really try to keep my, uh, my inbox and my own kind of process rolling along is uh, through using multiple stars along with a quick access link. So if you don't know, um, up in your, if you use Gmail, up in your settings, uh, Gmail has the option to add uh, multiple stars. And uh, really quickly, my apologies, there seems to be some feedback on my line. If folks who are not muted can mute themselves, I'd really appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> but uh, for, for me, I, experience, I experimented with a whole bunch of different sort of stars generally. Um, the one yellow one that Gmail comes pre-programmed with just wasn't enough. I settled on four. Um, so I use a red bang, which just symbolizes, you know, I need, to, uh, I need to respond to this quickly. Yellow means that there's some action that I need to take. Blue is just for reference and purple is for that day sometime in the future when I'll have a chance to really sit down and read through all of those articles I should really read through. And I use those in conjunction with this labs that um, is available called Quick Links. And Quick Links just saves a link on that left hand bar of your Gmail um, to the searches that you do in your Google um, or in your Gmail itself. So for example, I did a search just on all of the, you know, all of the red bang stars that I had uh, start with that red bang to respond to, and I saved that as a direct link. So all I have to do is click on that link over in my left-hand side, and it comes up with all of the ones that are starred um, with that particular star. So that combination of two things has been really, really helpful. Just keeping everything moving. I'm one of those people, I like my inbox to be zero. Um, so it helps to kind of organize that and keep me going. My next one, if my slides will, there we go, um, is the unsend feature on, uh, on Gmail. If uh, this is just a setting that's again up in settings, it will give you a 30 second chance to unsend something. And so you enable that in your settings. And then um, once you've sent something out, you can just click, um, it'll come up with a little box at the very top underneath your search bar that says, 
your message has been sent and it gives you that little option to undo. If you're like me and have a really hard time spelling or, you know, always think of that last thing that, you know, you should have said in an email right after you've sent it, uh, the undo was really, really helpful. I think I must undo five or six emails each, uh, each day. So just to get that last piece of information or make sure that, you know, I spelled that one word completely correctly. Um, the other piece that, uh, that I, again, get, thank you for muting. Um, the, other, uh, the other one that I have uh, is uh, this, the themes in uh, Gmail have recently, and I'm not quite sure when, been expanded to, um, to include pictures that you actually take and that you've uploaded. So if you are a photographer, if you, you know, just like your own set of pictures, you can actually set those just to under themes as the background of your email. Um, this isn't, you know, this doesn't seem intuitively like an organizational principle, but I'm switching back and forth between my personal Gmail and my work Gmail all the time. And having two very distinctive backgrounds is really helpful. Um, and knowing that they're, you know, pictures that I uh, that I've taken and kind of you know bring that smile to my face is always always great. This uh, this latte was taken at a cafe called Topico Cafe in Buffalo. If you're ever in Buffalo, it's a great place to be, great place to check out. And then if you had heard um, one of our 50 tech tips, I think it was last year, um, Anna Steele presented on Keeps, which I was also a huge fan of. And Keeps, if you don't know, it's just the Google Sticky Calendar, uh, Sticky Note program. Um, I keep random thoughts there. I keep my shopping list for uh, for groceries. I um, I keep just about all of the information that uh, that I need, and that I organize those just thoughts that I have on that daily basis. It's really easy just to throw them onto a quick sticky note, go through them later. Um, they keeps allows you to organize them into different sort of buckets as well as um, different uh, as well as different tags and will remind you it integrates with a lot of things Re most recently they started integrating with Google Docs so yeah there's a commenting there's a comment feature in Google Docs that has always you know been there but sometimes it's helpful for me to just as I'm thinking through you know, thoughts on, on a document that may also apply in other contexts to do a quick, um, to do a quick keeps, keeps note, which appears on that document. It also appears on my Keeps board. And if you have a Google account, you can access it now at keeps.google.com. Um, and uh, really helps to kind of bring some of those ideas that I you know, sometimes capture in or see in documents all over the place helps kind of bring that, those out into a different context and reminds me that they're there before, um, before I lose them. So that's, uh, that's one that I've just started to really play around and get into, but it's really, really great. And again, big fan of Keith. Oh, permanent clipboard, which is a, a Chrome extension. And you know, there are a lot of these programs out there, but uh, this is the one that I happen to use. I don't know that it's actually better or worse than any other one that's out there, but essentially the idea behind this is there are, um, there, are there are snippets of text that you may use over and over and over again um, that you wanna be able to do something as quick as with three strokes, insert into an email or insert into a document or insert into a website. If you're like me and have a really hard time uh, writing HTML or any programming language that you use sort of lightly, um, for example, I can never do the, uh, the HTML tag for links because I can't spell the H-E-R-F correctly, routinely. Um, I interpose word, I interpose letters, just rough on me. So this allows you to create just a snippet of text and then insert it through the permanent clipboard, it works just like your clipboard would, um, but instead of only keeping the last thing you copied or cut, it's gonna keep all of the, it's gonna keep your own kind of uh, preset set of uh, snippets. So really helpful, really great. Again, hor I'm a horrible speller, so it really helps with those sorts of things. And you know, I know that there's uh, a, at least five or six just phrases or paragraphs that I just use over and over and over again. 
So ZZ presented on um, one sort of web chat um, and video feature. This is one that I use a lot. I use Zoom um, and it is really helpful. It's been a really great uh, platform to use just generally. Um, specifically for, the, for me, there's a Chrome extension to schedule a Zoom meeting. Um, so with Zoom, you both have access to just um, general uh, ind individualized rooms that you can set up for meetings that have unique URLs and unique, um, unique phone numbers, but they also give you your own dedicated room that is just a general one that you can use whenever. The Zoom scheduler will allow me to put that information on my own room in any Google Calendar invite that I uh, that I send out, and will take out the uh, Google Hangout link, which always confuses people. Whenever we're whenever I'm scheduling in Google Calendar, I always have to remember to take out that Google Hangout link. Otherwise, it's telling people that there are that there's a meeting potentially in two different places. Um, so the Zoom scheduler for Chrome, if you use Zoom, is uh, really, really great and kind of eliminates that. If you're on the market and looking for a new, uh, a new system to do your video conferencing, check out Zoom. It's, it's been a really good one to, uh, to work with. So another one that, uh, that I use just to kind of keep myself um, organized within Slack is their handy pinned posts. So it, we've, I think we've had a tech tip on Slack before. It's a great sort of messaging system and more. There are channels that you can organize yourself into. It's a really, really great way to uh, kind of communicate across various projects or across various groups um, and has a lot of really pretty excellent features. My favorite one that they have is a pretty simple one that's been around forever, but it's their pinned post. So somebody will post something and you can actually just pin it so that it appears on the right hand side of your Slack chat uh, screen. So, you know, this, uh, this is really great whenever I'm starting a new channel and I have a dedicated reason for that channel, I'm able to just pin a quick post right there with links and information um, about what that channel is doing, any shared documents, anything like that, right, right there in one easy place. So my next one is uh, Habetica. Now, this is there are a couple of different apps out there that are really designed to gamify your task list. Um, so this one, your you enter your tasks; they appear as little creatures that you can vanquish. I don't use this for my everyday habit building, you know, to do list. That's something that I'll talk about in just a second. I really use this for my procrastination list. So I've got this procrastination list of things that you know I really want to get to, but I just can't seem to find the time. And then, you know, once every couple of weeks, I'll sit down, block out some time, sit down, and uh, this particular app just makes it, makes the afternoon go a little faster, makes it a little bit more fun, um, really kind of gets me into the, the idea that, yeah, these are tasks that maybe I don't necessarily want to do, who really wants to fill out that much paperwork. Um, but it's a good it's a good one to rely on and to and to use for that. Some people use it for you know actual habit building for daily habits for um, daily tasks or weekly or monthly tasks. I you know don't have the time to put my information into another app, but for the procrastination list, it's a pretty good one and one that I I look forward to those uh, to those afternoons a little bit more. Now going a little analog because my my world although really revolving around tech and uh, access to justice and tech enabled spaces is both uh, both analog and digital. For my actual sort of tracking, meeting notes, my you know to-do lists, all of that stuff, I, and for project planning especially, I actually really love just pen to paper journaling. And one of the things that I've found to be really helpful is this sort of, um, this process that has been going on for a couple of years now uh, called bullet journaling. You can just Google it. There's, it's one of those kind of Swiss army knives of, uh, of concepts of it can really be anything you want. So, you know, I do a monthly, uh, a monthly review where I think about what went well the month before, what I'm planning to do the next month. Each day has, you know, sort of what my meetings are and I take notes on each of those and 
um, you know, really utilize just a pretty standard, regular um, journal to uh, to get that information and to keep it. So again, it's not the most uh, not the most digitally savvy way to keep a uh, a list for for this, but honestly, it, it gets me where I need to go. It's really really helpful. And you know the process itself and the different kind of layouts that you can create are fairly endless because it's just a journal. So it's worth a quick Google if you're interested in just you know pen to paper journaling. Check out bullet journaling. Just put it into Google. You'll come up with a ton of results. Um, so those are really great. And it's not a tech project if there's not a disaster. Um, so this is my tech emergency kit. It's pretty small. Um, you can see there that I have a couple of extra cords, a backup battery, which is on the right-hand side underneath, the, underneath that kind of knot of cords. Um, and then I have an extra headset, a pen, an extra set of uh, headphones that also has a mic. Um, it's small. It fits into a, a small bag. I use it for traveling. I use it for, um, I use it anytime I'm working remotely. Um, can't tell you the number of times that, you know, my main headset has just gone um, completely, completely awry and being able to uh, have just backups of everything I need quickly and right there has really been helpful. So, you know, your tech emergency kit is going to look different, um, but it's definitely worth thinking through what you would like to have on hand. My very last one, and I managed to slip an 11 instead of my 10. Um, last time I did this, I did a meditation app called Stop, Think, and Breathe. Um, I just wanted to do a quick revisit. I, uh, I've switched meditation apps. Um, I now use Insight Timer. Um, it's, you know, kind of in that balance of, you know, the, world, the work that you do and kind of the, the fast-paced um, expectations that we all have of ourselves and of each other. This is a really great way just to take a deep breath to you know, unwind just a little bit. There are meditations that you can do on the bus if you're like me and only take the bus. Um, meditations you can do pretty much anywhere from five minutes to an hour. Um, and it's been a really you know, kind of great way to just make that part of my, uh, my daily routine is just having that app, having it on my, uh, on my phone. Like I said, this is Insight Timer. There's one called Stop, Think, and Breathe, which is an, uh, another perfectly good one. There are a bunch of them out there, but just wanted to, to throw that out. And with that, those are my uh, tech tips. Thank you guys so much. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and uh, just let me know. Great, so we did have at least one comment or one question come in and a, a couple of comments about the permanent clipboard. Uh, Melissa said that she loves that idea. It will be really handy. But we had a question from Amy, she asked, if you can put a shortcut on your desktop for the permanent clipboard for easy access. So what that actually does, so that permanent clipboard is a Chrome plugin. So it's going to be a browser-based plugin. And what you actually do is when you hit the part of the text that you want to put that information in, um, you just, uh, if you're on a computer, you right click, um, if you're on a Mac, it's command right click or it's command click, and it will have um, it'll have that list of the snippets that you want to insert there, the ones that you've saved. So that's the way the permanent clipboard works. I don't know that there's one that has a shortcut on your desktop. Most of them, you'd be looking at some kind of browser plugin. That's the only ones that I've seen, but other folks may know better. So hopefully that's helpful. Great. Thanks, Sander. And so I uh, just wanted to welcome Anna Steele. Uh, I will turn it over to you now. Great. Thanks, Jillian. Um, hey, everybody. I'm Anna Steele. I'm a member of the Legal Services Consulting team at Just Tech. Uh, prior to that, I was a technology coordinator at Legal Assistance of Western New York, uh, doing a lot of tech and access to justice related projects. Um, like Xander, I'm a huge fan of Google, uh, so I tried to keep my Google tips to a minimum, but I do have some for you all today. Uh, starting with the Explore button, I'm going to talk about the Explore button for three different Google applications. It's in the bottom right-hand corner um, of your Google Docs, your Google uh, presentation, your Google Sheets, and it has a different feature in each. Um, if you click it while you're working on a Google Doc, it 
gives you three options. It searches the web for related content to what you're writing. It searches the web for uh, images related to the content that you're working on. And it also searches your Google Drive for related content. Um, I assume many of you are like me in that uh, at any given time during the day, you have approximately 7 million tabs open. So this is kind of a good way to consolidate um, your information based on the actual document that you're working on at any given time. You can do a web search uh, for information, images, and look for uh, relevant documents in your drive all from within uh, your Google Doc. Uh, so the next one is the Explore button on Google Sheets. Um, again, I think I'm sure I'm not the only one this happens to, but I feel like I often get into a little bit of a rut with my um, presentations in terms of the style and the templates that I use and the backgrounds and things like that. So this looks at the content um, on your slides and kind of gives you some uh, style ideas. So it's really helpful even if you don't um, use them, right? If you click them, it'll apply that style to your slide. Uh, but even if you don't use it, it can kind of give you um, a general idea of what your content would look like uh, in different uh, styles and templates and things like that. So the third one is with Google Sheets, and this has just recently been updated, uh, and I think it's pretty cool. So when you're in a Google Sheet and you have a bunch of uh, information there, and you know you wanna do something with it, but you're not quite sure what, if you click on the Explore button and start kind of typing generally what you want to do, um, using machine learning, Google's able to give you the chart that it thinks that you want to see. Um, so that's just kind of a, a cool feature to allow you to um, better utilize and analyze uh, any tabular data that you're working with uh, in Google Sheets. Um, another little Google tip here, uh, Write Clearly is a plain language tool um, that Lonnie York has worked on alongside um, Urban Insight and uh, Idaho Legal Aid Services and Transcend Translations out in California uh, through LSC TIG funding to help people uh, better produce plain language content on their websites. Now in its, um, I guess, purest form, uh, Write Clearly exists as a browser plugin um, that you can uh, add to uh, Chrome or Firefox or Safari, and then it analyzes that website for plain language. Um, however, when we were working on this, people are like, well, I want to analyze the content before I put it up on the website, or I want to analyze the letter that I'm writing to my client. Um, so at the pre-TIG um, hackathon this year, I worked with uh, Quentin Steinhaus from Greater Boston Legal Services and um, the Open Advocate team over at Urban Insight to develop a Write Clearly plugin for Google Docs. So now you can evaluate um, text in a Google document for plain language. It'll give you the flesh Kincaid grade level and uh, suggest words that um, you may want to look for easier to read synonyms for. Um, my, I think this is my last Google tip is auto draw. Um, folks may remember from earlier this year, or maybe it was the end of last year, uh, Google came out with what was called Quick Draw, and it was a really fun kind of neural net machine learning exercise where you would try to draw something and uh, it would, the program would try to figure out what you were drawing. Um, it was a little bit embarrassing and showed how horrible I really was at drawing, but it was a really kind of interesting exercise. And obviously Google was going to use that data for something. One of the things that they used that data for was um, this auto draw experiment. So on the left is me trying to draw a car and then Google telling me, here's a better picture of a car. So it's kind of a really, um, a really cool way to get really uh, basic, simple icons. Um, and it's just, again, a fun little exercise as well. Um, but as you can see, uh, my car was pretty terrible and it came out uh, based on Google suggestions to be much better. Um, so check it out, uh, A, for, for fun and B, um, for any time where you need some kind of simple icons. Um, switching gears to a uh, Microsoft-based tip, uh, Teams is Microsoft's answer to Slack, um, kind of just integrated uh, chat tool within um, 365. 
So one thing that you can do with Teams, and I'm sure you can probably do it with Slack too through um, a bot or some sort of add-in, is the ability to assign an email address to a uh, channel in Teams. So what I did was I assigned um, an email address to, to this channel in Teams, and then I created a filter uh, in Outlook that said, okay, when an email comes from or is sent to LSNTAP, forward it to this uh, email address. And what that allows to happen, it allows it to show up in the LSNTAP Teams channel. So if there, if I have colleagues who aren't on the LSNTAP list, or if we want to um, discuss something that came through the LSNTAP list without clogging up uh, further our inboxes, we can have that discussion um, outside of the inbox and know exactly um, what we're referring to. So that's, um, I think been really useful. And um, I'm a big fan of keeping email um, to certain things and keeping other things um, in Teams or chat, other chat-based tools. Uh, so that was a great way to explore that. Another Microsoft-based uh, tool is their to-do list. I know I have yet to find um, a way to keep my daily to-do list that I am 100% satisfied with. Uh, Microsoft recently bought Wonderlist, and this is what they've been kind of turning Wonderlist into. The thing that I really like about it is I can have my separate to-do lists um, all down the side, and then at the beginning of each day, I can go through those to-do lists and add something to my day. So then it gets moved while it still exists in my um, – in the specific project that it's associated with, it then also gets bumped over to my day. So it's kind of a really easy way to organize my greater what needs to get done into what I need to get done right now today. Um, it's not super full featured. Um, there's nothing uh, overly um, you know, different about it necessarily from any other to-do list. I'm experimenting with it now. Um, but like I said, there's a, a number of alternatives out there, um, but this happens to be the one um, that's currently got my attention. Another Outlook tip here uh, is conditional formatting. So in the desktop version of Outlook, uh, obviously a lot of people are familiar with filters. Um, you can also set up rules in conditional formatting so that emails from certain people or containing uh, certain words or um, sent to certain people or one example I've seen where um, where you are the sole recipient of that email um, the subject line and the the line that it occupies in Outlook can be a different color uh, or something like that so it really kind of gets uh, grabs your attention to say either this is from my boss you know this is from the CFO so it involves an invoice Right, uh, this is from LSNTAP, so mark it blue. Uh, so things like that, I think it can be, be a really useful tool in getting your um, inbox organized. Uh, this has come across, this is actually um, recently a discussion on LSNTAP, but I figured I'd point it out again. Uh, Transcend Translation has been a fantastic partner to Law New York um, on uh, the plain language, write clearly and read clearly projects we've been working on. but um, they have a series of kind of plain language graphics that um, folks can use to help show uh, different scenarios or situations. Um, and, you know, there's a whole kind of movement around this, but uh, this is just another kind of resource for these. And, you know, the more people use um, these particular icons, regardless of where the icons are coming from, um, the more recognizable they become. And uh, for my final tip here, um, relying on XKCD here, this really resonates me with me, and I imagine it resonates with a lot of you on the webinar as well. There are so many different ways in which we communicate with each other um, that I think it's really important, uh, especially for me now, working with Just Tech in a consulting role, right? I have a number of clients and we're using a number of different um, applications to talk both internally and externally. And it's really kind of important to step back and evaluate what really works for you for what situations and what works for the people that you work with, because I would love to start consolidating some of this. <laughs> um, so, you know, I think it's, 
it's important to do to keep yourself organized, um, to keep yourself efficient. Um, you know, keep testing. Uh, obviously, right, it's important to be using Signal for certain communications due to uh, its secure nature and not others. Um, and obviously, the separation between personal and professional is important. Um, but still, uh, definitely something worth thinking about as you are, um, you know, learning about uh, these tech tips and also just kind of going about your regular communications in your day-to-day -day life. So that uh, is all for me, and uh, Jillian will bring us home. Great. Thanks, Anna. I really loved that last comic. I thought it was uh, very, very relevant. So can yes. you just... <laughs> While I start up, and um, so we are, we have 90 minutes set aside for this webinar. But I, I think these last few tips will only, will only run us about uh, 10 more minutes. So if you can just hang on, that would be great. Otherwise, feel free to uh, check out, uh, download the slides later. So uh, the first tip that I have is I care. This is a um, this is a plugin, or excuse me, this is a browser extension for Chrome. And some of you who've worked with me may have seen this pop up every once in a while. Um, I tend to have really dry eyes from working on on my computer all day long. And so this is a great, uh, you, can, you can adjust the settings so that it pops up on your browser. We'll flash mine I set every 20 minutes. My eye doctor said you need to take you need to uh, stare off into the distance 20 yards, blink 20 times for 20 seconds. So that's what I try to do to keep my eyes healthy. Um, so and it, it's also a great reminder, too, to get up and walk around. So I thought that, that was an appropriate thing to insert here since we're, we've all been staring at our screens for the last hour. And now I'm going to talk about some security privacy type tips that that's what the rest of mine are going to be focused on these are in no way exhaustive but i think are really really great to use especially if uh, i think brian and others covered some of some tips on yesterday's privacy and security webinar uh, but these are some great personal tips to implement your hopefully your uh, your local it a uh, person will be up to date on a lot of the a lot of the major security systems that should be in place but there are some steps that you can definitely take locally as well um, so i'm going to tell a little bit of a story um, through my tips but one day i had heard of and this is maybe how many of you have been exposed and of course, this actually just happened yesterday, but had heard of a major major breach occurring. Um, and it made me think, well, how am I being impacted by, by these? Is, is this actually impacting me? And someone had actually recommended this website, Have I Been, Have I Been uh, Pwned, I think is how you pronounce it. And it's a great, it's a great place to go to see if you have an account, an email account that's been compromised in a data breach data breach. So uh, this is specifically regarding data breaches. And so I went ahead and I checked that with my personal email addresses, with my work email addresses. And I had discovered my work email address was fine, but uh, my my personal email addresses had been uh, compromised in a breach. So that inspired me to go ahead and change all of my passwords once again. I try to do that every three months but I think it's always a good practice to get into. And the, the, my next tip is, comes from the Electronic Frontier Foundation. This is a tips, tools, and how-tos for safer online communication. And it covers the basics of what you need to stay technology secure. And as I mentioned, while your IT department or your local organization may have some of the major areas covered, such as making sure your system gets updated, has the basic appropriate privacy and security programs running like malware bytes and antivirus protection, there are things that you can do to also reduce your risk. And some of these are basic and some of the key areas covered are identifying suspect sites, how, how you can do that as a user, 
uh, identifying suspect programs and emails, protecting yourself from tracking and other malicious attempts, and developing good password habits and tools. One of the tips that was featured, that Reese featured, was actually listed in that, uh, a password keeper. And the way, part of, in order to identify if you're trying to get a sense of what what protection you need is the first step is really identifying what your system is. Actually, our uh, my colleague at ProboneNet, Steve Steve LeBlanc, uh, uses this as a support tool. But I thought that this could also be helpful if you're trying to assess what type of system you need and what security needs you would have around this. Uh, so this is basically a website and it will tell you and you can send this to people that you're supporting as well but it gives you all the details on your web browser your ip address uh, whether javascript is enabled so it's a great way to assess what you're working with if you've ever worked with uh one time i i got a trojan horse on my computer and i and i called up my our it team and they asked me some of these questions and i was immediately able to provide some of this information and my next tool is Ninite. It's, uh, I actually got this tip from our IT support person, uh, support person. It's a really great, easy, fast way to update and install uh, software. And in updating software is really key in, in order to protect yourself against, uh, against new things that are being developed all the time. And Ninite downloads and installs programs automatically in the background. So when you go to the site, you can see here, you, you can pick the apps that you want and just select uh, Chrome um, for messaging apps, media, and just select those and it will, it will update. And then my next tip um, is I heard this again through the Electronic Frontier Foundation. It's a volunteer run service that provides both privacy and anonymity online by masking who you are and where you are connecting. And the service also protects you from the Tor network itself. So um, this is for people who might need occasional anonymity and privacy when ac accessing uh, websites. And it's just like it's a it's a browser. It's just like any other website browser, except that it sends your communication through Tor, making it harder for people who are monitoring you to know exactly what you're doing online, and harder for people monitoring the sites you use to know where you're connecting from. Um, and keep in mind, though, that when you're using the Tor browser, it's only the activities that you're doing inside the browser itself that are an 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 anonymized. And my other, my next tip is HTTPS Everywhere. It's a Firefox, Chrome, and Opera extension, and it encrypts your communications with many major websites, making your browsing more secure, and it automatically switches thousands of sites from insecure HTTP to secure HTTPS, and it pr protects you against many forms of surveillance and account hijacking and some forms of censorship, and it was developed by the Electronic Frontier Foundation and the Tor Project. The next one was is also another project of the Electronic Frontier Foundation. You're seeing a trend here. They've got a lot of great tools, but it's a browser add-on that stops advertisers and other third-party trackers from secretly tracking where you go and what pages you look at on the web. So if an advertiser seems to be tracking you across multiple websites without your permission, Privacy Badger automatically blocks that advertiser from loading any more content into your browser. And so to the advertiser, it's like you suddenly disappeared. My next tip is, yet again, another project of the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Um, it's Panopticlick, and when you visit a website, online trackers and the site itself may be trying to identify you, even if you've installed software to protect yourself. And it's possible to configure your browser to thwart tra tracking, but many people don't know how. And so Panopticlick will analyze how well your browser and add-ons on, add -ons protect you against online tracking techniques. And they'll also see if your system is uniquely configured and thus identifiable, even if you're using privacy protective software. 
And so this is actually, um, we, we actually have featured 51 tips today. Um, so this is my last one. I'm not sure whether all of this information about privacy and security is leaving you, has resulted in you feeling a little bit more or less cagey about digital security and privacy. So I thought I'd feature a and cage a uh, chrome extension um excuse the terrible pun but um it replaces all images on all pages to nicholas cage um, and as a bonus it can prevent some of the more unsavory ad images that may pop up i will say it's also a great april fool's joke to pull on someone uh i've i i think it's i think it's great i I, I highly encourage you to, to take advantage of this. So I wanted to say thank you, given that that's our 51st tip. I'm not seeing any additional question, but I wanted to thank you all for attending today. And a reminder to take the survey that follows after this webinar and to also visit LSNTAP org for details for additional details on upcoming webinars uh, and I will also turn it over to Brian to see if there's any other uh, any other closing words thank you so much uh, it's been a wonderful webinar here um, electronic frontier foundation is one of my absolute favorite nonprofits they do wonderful work and all of our presenters had some great stuff I'd like to remind people that um, all the slides can be downloaded under the handout section. Uh, we will also have the full video posted here uh, within the next few days um, on our YouTube channel. So if you have any additional tips, um, please consider posting those in the comments on the YouTube channel. Uh, we would be happy to share things. Um, for example, we got a wonderful tip in here um, over keep Key Pass, which is a alternative to LastPass, which is free, um, and most of the new features on LastPass um, are now uh, available to users under their free version. Just had so many great tips today. Thank you so much, Jillian. Thank you to all of our presenters here today.